Good morning. Thank you for being here. I dare you, I dare you to count your blessings. As long as the sermon is this morning, you should have plenty of time to get started. But, maybe go home. If, if you're looking for something to do, get a piece of paper, get a notebook. Notebook would be terrific. And just start writing them down. What are your blessings? I dare you. You'll run out of ink if you are constant. And may God bless you with enough that you would run out of ink. I'm not so great at remembering my blessings. That would help. Actually, Roger is one of the best people I know at reminding me that I'm blessed. Because he so often will respond, How are you doing? I am blessed. We are those people. We are blessed. If you want to follow along in your copy of the scriptures, Numbers chapter 5 is where we'll start. That's not where we will stay for long. But if you're, go ahead with me and scan through your headlines there. There's a context to build until we get to talk about the Lord blessing. As chapter 5 starts, there's a discussion of putting away that which is unclean. Now, there are more specifics than I'm going to talk about, but that's the way it starts. It's the putting away from you, dismissing from your presence that which is unclean. The next conversation is about restitution. It's true repentance. It's not doing the things that are wrong anymore. Put away the things that are unclean. Don't do the things that are wrong anymore. And then there's this weird spot, right? The test for adultery. I want to take a side note right here as we get started and discuss with you, this is not God committing abortion. And if you want to discuss that or if you need clarification on that, I'll be happy to discuss that with you. The world right now is pushing it. That's not what this says. But it discusses the test for adultery. Adultery is breaking of a covenant. A man and a woman are joined together in holy matrimony. That's a covenant relationship. Do we are compared the church is compared in Ephesians chapter 5 as being married to Christ or to be married to Christ. It is a, a breaking of the covenant. Is there, has there been any breach of the covenant? Put away the things that are unclean. Be truly penitent. Make sure the covenant is intact. And then you get the Nazarite vow in chapter 6. Also, doesn't seem to fit into the context of what we've said so far. But you're not required to take the Nazarite vow. This is like next level Israelitism. This is the Nazarite vow. It's going above and beyond what they were required to do. Put away the things that are unclean from you. Truly repent. Make sure your covenant is intact. Grow beyond. And then lastly in the chapter, God will bless you. Now each of these sections individually are important and they mean something in their own right and in their own context. This morning we will look mostly at the last, but it is important to know, just to build on this progressivism in the, the context, when you are removing uncleanness from your life, truly repenting, keeping the covenant, growing beyond where you are, God is going to bless you. So, before we get into our text, there's a couple of things I want to make note of in our text. First is the, the way that the text is, the, the, the way that the blessing is delivered. God says to Moses, you say to Aaron, let them, let Aaron and his, his sons, his priests, let them say to the people, God says to Moses, Moses says to Aaron and, his, and the priests, and Aaron and the priests say to the people. <coughs> Why doesn't God just say to the people? <coughs> he is. But you don't get everything the way you want it. You get it the way God needs it given. And so what you see here is the law comes to the law giver. The law giver gives it to those who manifest or uh, minister between God and the people. And they take that to the people. And they say, people, 
You need to know something. God bless you. The instructions from the lawgiver given to the priests to make sure the people understand God desires to bless them. Second of all, the one, th- one of the things I want to point out, the name of God translation is, has been uh, redacted there. I, I did that. But it takes away the, the capital letters. If you're looking along in your copy of the scriptures, it's all capital letters, L-O-R-D. That's not what's written in the original language. It's put there out of a, as a sign of respect to not use the name of the Lord in an inappropriate way. But what God tells Moses to tell Aaron to tell the people is I. And he uses his name. He uses his own first name. And he says to you. His name is important. And he uses it to bless the people. There is a God. He is alive. He has a name. He knows yours. And he wants to bless you. It's pointed to a group of people, but each of these blessings, the different word is used. First, it starts with God by name. God by his name. Yahweh, bless you. And this isn't bless y'all. It isn't bless yins. It isn't bless them. It will be in verse 27. But right here in every one of these individually, it is to you. Trey blesses Jerry. It is personal and it is to individuals. Each line is not an individual blessing, but they build on each other. So they shall put my name upon the people of Israel and I will bless them okay remove uncleanness from your life truly repent keep the covenant grow beyond where you are and let God bless you now we can begin now let's look at our text the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The first one, the Lord bless. Remember, the Lord is the way that we're going to read it. It says Yahweh bless you. It's not the answer to a sneeze. It's a promise. It is the Creator promising blessings to His people. I reference you to the entire sermon last week. How does he bless us? Through Jesus Christ. It's the greatest blessing there ever has been. Greatest blessing there ever will be. It was promised to Abraham so that Abraham could receive that blessing, that he could gain that reward, but also so that he could give it to other people. It's through his lineage. We talked last week about how we fit into that lineage and how we are blessed by Christ so that we can bless other people with it. First thing that you need to remember, the first thing that comes before anything and the first name that comes above all names is Jesus Christ is a blessing that is greater than anything you've got going on in your life. And we need to remember that. Number two is bless uh, a keep. It's not a request. The Lord bless you and keep you. You're His. You belong to Him. He needs to keep you. But it's not He needs to keep you. It's God saying, I'm going to keep you. You're mine. You're mine. He's telling you to ask Him to hold you. And He's not going to let go. He is promising, I'm not going to let go. So God says to the lawgiver, say to the people who are going to mediate between me and all of the people, I will never let you go. I want that. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder rolls no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. God promises, I will 
Hold my hand all the way, every hour, every day, from here to the great unknown. Take my hand. Let me stand where no one stands alone. And God is promising, I will. You are mine. The Lord bless you and keep you. You're his. That's your God. You want a blessing from God? Is this to us? Keep this scripture in context. It's repeated in Hebrews, or it's said differently in Hebrews. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That's your God. He's got you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you. His face to shine upon you. Moses asks for this. There's a a period of time where Moses asks, let me see your glory. I know it's too small. It's okay. God says, I can't show you my face. Now, what's the exchange? Let me see your glory. And God says, I can't show you my face. So what is his face? It's that thing to glory in. The Lord make his glory to shine upon you. It's not a request. Remember, this is God saying it. I will make my glory shine on you. Take that in. What does that mean? God make his glory to shine on you. There's also some mysteriousness to it, right? No one can see my face. Moses, you can't understand what it would be like to see my face. You need to hide right here in the cleft of the rock. You need to hide right here. And I'm going to bring my glory by. I'll make my goodness pass by is how it's written. And you can see... Just some of the results of what happens. You can see my back. And so it's a a mysterious thing about exactly what his glory is. What should we take away? You cannot dream of how God is going to bless you. Beyond measure. Beyond need. Beyond reason. That's and be gracious to you. Remember these are a progression. The Lord bless you and keep you and shine his glory on you and be gracious. Give you things you don't deserve, favor you divinely. Part of not understanding how much goodness he has is not understanding how much goodness he has. I know that sounds trite. But what does that mean? It means if I'm going to say God is is too much for me to fully understand, then I need to understand there are some things I'm not going to get. I'm not going to understand everything. I'm not going to understand how a God who has promised, I will bless you beyond measure. I will let you see my goodness. I'm not going to understand certain things. They're not going to look like blessings. Paul says in 2 Corinthians, I've been given this thorn in the flesh. I keep asking God to take it away. And he said, no. What? My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. The Lord make His face uh, to shine on you and be gracious to you. Does Paul feel that with whatever it is, that this, this thing that bothers him? Does he feel divinely favored? He keeps asking God, take it away. Whatever this is, I don't know. I think I do, but I'm conceited that way. He, God, you got to take this away from me. And God says, no. My grace is sufficient for you. Why does he say that? Look at why Paul says he has this thing in the first place. I'd be conceited if I didn't have that. Whatever this thing is, it's keeping Paul humble to a point. It's keeping him in a place that's more in line with God. What he admits here is, if I, if God would take this thing away from me, if he would bless me in this way, my life would be better. But I wouldn't be as good a person. Why don't you win the lottery? Because you can't handle that kind of money. And probably because you don't play the lottery. 
Jesus says that if you're faithful in little things, that he will give you the responsibility of many things. He also says that we're not going to be tempted beyond what we can handle. And so while we may find it to be a terrific measure of grace for us to have something new or something else or something better or something not be, God says, I've got you. And I'll give you everything you need. And sometimes you're not going to understand it. It sounds real good this morning. It's really hard to put into practice when the tears are rolling down your face. May we be like Paul in understanding that when we don't understand things and we look to God, that, that even that modicum of faith is a blessing that others may see. My grace is sufficient for you. I like the old King James here. My grace is sufficient for thee. It's all you need. It comes from God, and it's all that I need. God is going to bless us beyond comprehension, and that means sometimes we're not going to understand it. Tempted and tried, we're off made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long. While there are others living about us, often molest, never molested, though in the wrong. Farther along we'll know all about it. Farther along we'll understand why. Cheer up, my brother, and live in the sunshine. You'll understand it all by and by. Beyond what I understand means sometimes I won't understand. The Lord lift, hip, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace means that low spot. Remember, this is a progression. Sometimes you're not going to understand it and it's going to hurt and you're going to turn and ask God, why? And the next line of the blessing is he lift up his countenance. It's the same word for face earlier. He looked toward you, lift up his countenance upon you. Hallmark does a terrific job of this. When you don't really see the person's face and they're talking and they're talking and then they turn and there's like a whole different light that's thrown on them. Got a little gold color to it. Their hair just goes... And you, you understand from the camera angle, you understand from the words that were said, that's impressive. It's supposed to be impressive. And you go, wow. Typically, wow, he's honk. Or, ooh, she's pretty. The way that it's being used here in this blessing is God raises up his face and assures you it's going to be all right. It's got you. I'm blessing you. I am going to glorify you. Even if it hurts, even if there's a problem, God's going to make it all right. Psalm 4. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear the reply. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set himself, has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call on him. Tremble and do not sin. When you're on your beds, search your hearts and be silent before we continue with the psalm. Remove uncleanness from your life. Truly repent. Check your status, your covenant relationship with God. Is it intact? Grow above and beyond and let Him bless you. Continuing in, in Psalm 4. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. In peace I'll lie down to sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Grain and wine is symbols of a covenant relationship. You already partook of grain and wine this morning. Really, really new wine, thankfully. Symbols of the covenant. Because I have come to God, because I've laid it before Him, because I'm offering righteous sacrifices or the sacrifices of the righteous, 
because my relationship with God is right, because I'm trying, He's blessing me. That's verse 27, right? So put my name on the people and I'll bless them. Our covenant relationship with God brings reminder of His blessing. It was read for us this morning. It was discussed and it was prayed about. It's because of the shed life of Christ. We have salvation. It's the greatest blessing there is. We remembered that this morning. We proclaimed that this morning. We partook of that blessing this morning. But my salvation is not my own. It's been given to me by Him. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. I will not falter. I will not faint. He is my shepherd. I am not afraid. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. He will uphold me all of my days. I am surrounded by mercy and grace. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. And I will not waver walking by faith. He will be strong and deliver me safe. The joy of the Lord is my strength. It's because of my relationship with Him. It's because you can see it. It's because He's promised it to me. He's promised it to me and I know. What can man do to me? How can I fail? Nobody can take me away from Him. He's got me. He's blessing me. He's glorifying me. He's taking me through things I don't understand. And nobody can take me away from The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I can handle this life because peace is provided to me by God. My relationship with God is right because of what he has done for me. Put away the uncleanness from my life. Truly repent. Be mindful of my covenant, keeping it with him. Growing above and beyond it. He cannot not bless me. He's promised. He's faithful. He cannot not bless me. That's made possible by the blood of Christ. It's peace that I don't understand. And it's peace provided by the blood that was shed for me. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ. I don't know how it's going to be okay. But God said it will be. And that's where I have to be. That's what faith is. I know that I will be. I know that I'm going to make it. I'm not only prepared for the problems of this life, but I'm also prepared for the glory of the next one. Because God has promised. And I believe. So verse 27. So they shall put my name upon the people of Israel and I will bless them. 1 John 3, verse 1, and an also terrific round of a song. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we should be called sons of God. And in this way he blesses us. God has exalted his Christ, being baptized into him, puts his name on us. That blood of the cross washes away our sins and puts His name on us. In having God's name upon you, understand that that comes with blessing. So write down that list. Try. I dare you. Write down a list. It will never be complete. May we be more and more grateful, not only for the blessings that we don't see, but the ones that we take for granted. God's priests are the one who do this. Put the name on the people. Let them know God blesses them. That's our job. That is the job of the people who mediate, not mediate, who minister between God and man. That's your job. We are to bless people by proclaiming the name by which they can be saved and therefore so that they can be blessed.
blessed. Put my name on the people, and I will bless them. We, we covered that one. It was the first one. It's bookended on everything about the relationship between man and God. It's bookended. God has been trying to bless us since forever. You need to know it. That's for you. It's for everybody, but it is from Yahweh, the creator, to you. God bless you. What does it mean to repeat something? What does it mean to repeat something? What does it mean to repeat something? Number one, I don't want you to forget it. Number two, it's important. It's so important, I don't want you to forget it. God has been trying to bless us since forever. Will we remove uncleanness? Will we truly repent? Will we make sure that our covenant with Him is intact and in the way that it ought to be? Will we grow beyond where we are planted? God will bless you every step of the way. And sometimes you won't understand how the things are a blessing. But by faith in God, you know that they are. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face to shine on you. Yahweh, and be gracious to you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. If there's anything that you need to do to fix the relationship that you have with God, if you've checked that covenant and have found it wanting in some way. It is the grace that he has given you to bless you that you have had the time this morning to reflect on that at least just a little bit. If you need to repair your relationship with him, do it now.